Good day and welcome to your VIDHS, an informative podcast brought to you by the U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Human Services, where we share with you the work we do every day in the Virgin Islands to help people acclaim their social services and feel good about themselves at the end of the day. We are a hardworking organization. Today, I have a special treat. We are discussing the USVI TANF program with the director of the TANF Jobs Program, Dr. Sierra Burke, and eligibility supervisor, Ms. Judy David. Director Burke is responsible for the TANF Jobs Program that assists citizens in the Virgin Islands with moving into full-time employment. Ms. David is a subject matter expert and has worked with the program for over 31 years. Today, we will be focusing on a TANF program, which is temporary assistance for needy families. Good day, ladies. How are you doing today? Hey, Ryan. So good to have you on the show. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Director Burke, I can start with you. Can you, at a high level, tell us what is the USVI TANF program? Well, first of all, thank you for having us here today. And the TANF program uh, is very unique and dynamic program, if I may say so. It is a program that is focusing on uh, providing financial assistance to family of low income and with defendant families. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love about the TANF program, specifically here in the U.S. Virgin Islands, is that it focuses on engaging participants to be able to engage in activities that are work-related, educational programs, job training, and more importantly, moving families forward to becoming self-sufficient and mm -hmm. self-reliant. So and that is very gratifying when you have the opportunity of working with such families and in such a program to watch individuals evolve into eventually entering the workforce, which is the ultimate goal. That's a really great program, and I'm learning a lot about it uh, as, as we move forward, and that's why I'm glad with you're here with us today. It's a, to have, when you're in a situation of a low point in your life, to be given employment sometimes is a step up, it's a morale booster, and that's why I think this program is, is very important. Let's get to the core components of it, though. What are the eligibility requirements for TANF? Well, I'm going to go on ahead for the eligibility criteria. I'm going to turn it over to my subject matter expert, Ms. Judy David, who's been really um, instrumental in making sure that our clients receive such a level of expertise, and she's more equipped with that, so I want to make sure that she shed lights on that area. Ms. David, let's talk about eligibility, since um, what, uh, what are the criteria for you to be a part of the program? Okay, you must at least be 18 years of age unless you're an emancipated minor with minor children that are being deprived of parental care. You must be a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident who has had their card for at least five years. Mm -hmm. You're going to need to have Social Security cards for everyone in the household or evidence that you have applied for a Social Security card. You're also going to not... You also need to know that you cannot have resources in excess of $2,000 monthly. I mean, that's in your bank account? Bank account, yes. Okay, that's also, yes. of course, the program is, mm -hmm. so no resources, I can't have cash in my savings or my credit that exceeds 2000 in exactly. order to join the program. Okay, that's excellent. Okay. You, um, it comes with an application, right? So you, you, where do you guys give out this application? Here at the office? You can get or? your application online. Okay. You can call the office and have one sent to you. Or you can come down to our office at Mars Hill and pick up an application. Um, you complete the application. It's the same application that you're going to use for SNAP. The only difference is you check cash at the top of the application. You Please, we ask you to complete the entire application, answer all of the questions, do not leave anything blank. We ask you to ensure that you sign the application, date the application, and please provide a working contact number so the workers can get in touch with you for the interview. You know, and I've always heard about the relationship, but I never understood it. Mm -hmm. How does paternity and child support relate to the program? Is that part of the eligibility process too? A very important part. First of all, if you're coming in to apply for TANF, you're going to be referred to paternity and child support. Mm -hmm. Basically, which when you get to paternity and child support, you're going to have to provide all as much information on the absent parent as possible. Yeah. First name, last name, social security number, mother and father's name, last known address, last known employment, or current if you happen to know that information currently. And paternity is there to establish a court action on the the absent parent to ensure that child support is being paid mm -hmm. and they're there just to assist you to get everything started so that you can again become self-sufficient and 
remove yourself from the program at some point. Okay. Is there any uh, work hour requirements that if I want to go through the program, I have to fulfill? Okay, well, aside from paternity and child support, you also have to register with the JOBS program. Right. Those are the two things you absolutely have to do. We cannot open a case until you've done those two things. When you register with JOBS, you're going to have to now ensure that you comply with the programs that they offer to you, and you have to do at least a minimum of 20 hours weekly. Let's talk about how does this program promote self-sufficiency? It promotes self-sufficiency in various facets. For example, one of the components of TANF is that definitely, as you may mention before, you have to have certain number of hours to be able to receive the cash benefits. Yeah. If you have children that are under the age of six, you have to at least participate 20 hours. Okay. If you have children over the age of six, you have to attribute 30 hours to be able to receive that cash payment. And with that, you're able to participate in educational programs, you're able to participate in employment training, vocational career tech training, you're able to also volunteer that subsequently uh, contributes to your work participation hours, as well as those volunteer hours and that volunteer experience could subsequently lead you to employment. Right. We've had some great success stories where individuals have completed high school, uh, volunteered within the Department of Human Services, and landed jobs with us. That's great and become you know, self-sufficient and self-reliant through the TANF program. Yeah. So we want to stress to our community the importance of taking advantage of such programs mm -hmm. and the fact that we pride ourselves in removing barriers yes. by providing childcare uh, reimbursement, transportation reimbursement, uh, also books and tuition. I think I'm gonna take all the money in my bank account so it doesn't exceed $2,000 so I can join this program because this or, is great. Well, you know, it's really focusing on low-income families. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's focused on low-income families is because we understand the plight of our community. We understand that 33% of our children currently are living in poverty. And how do we reduce poverty? Is through education. Yes, absolutely. And the TANF program does that. It lends itself to be able to provide a platform where people that are currently struggling or that lead, need an extra help provide yes. those support services. It seems a lot like, so. a, like a progression program, like um, once you get in, you, you tear up to a certain level. Is there a lifetime of the program? Can you? Throughout the whole entire lifetime, and I want to just shed light that um, this is what you used to be called welfare to work. Right. So your whole lifetime, you could only have TANF for five years. Yes. So I encourage anyone that signs up for TANF to make sure that they use their time wisely. Right. Because it doesn't make a difference if you opt to leave the Virgin Islands. That clock starts ticking from the time you enroll. So other states, their TANF guidelines might be different. Like right. for example, the state of Kansas, they only have 24 months. So if you've been using your town of benefits in the U.S. Virgin Islands and then decide to relocate, just for lack of a better term or an example, Kansas, yes. 24 months you've already used up, mm, there goes your lifetime. Yeah. So yeah. we want to make sure that our participants really make use of the time and take advantage of the great opportunity that the program lends itself to. Absolutely. Judy, talk to me a little bit about the core and non-core activities of the program? Okay, well some of the core activities include unsubsidized employment, work experience, on-the-job training, job search and job readiness assistance, community service, vocational training, and providing childcare for those who are participating in volunteering for the community. And then we have our non-core activities, which is our job skills training directly related to employment, satisfactory attendance to a secondary school or a course of study that would lead to a certificate. And then you have education directly related to your employment. Wow. So I can get possibly my GED Absolutely. through the program, maybe even my high school diploma, yes. right. maybe even a trade. Oh, uh, in a certain element yes. just by signing up for this and following the criteria. This is excellent and I, I, I want to ask a little more about because I know they're intertwined but how is SNAP related to TANF? Well first of all if someone comes in to apply for SNAP a worker can determine that perhaps that person is eligible for TANF assistance based right. on the interview so they can encourage the person to apply they would explain to the person about their 60 
um, time limit that they would have to register with jobs, that they would be referred to paternity. So the worker will go through all of that with the client. And once they have been referred to paternity, been referred to jobs, and they have done what they need to do, a case is approved. And at the first of every month, you would receive your benefits on the Bank of Park Pilar plus a debit card. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, right there on the mm -hmm. money. Let me ask you something. Other than SNAP, we work with other pro people. Like uh, we, we collaborate with UVI, I believe. Yes, through the Penn Foster Program. We also um, work with VIA, Department of Labor. Those are just some of the places that work with us. And as far as the um, vocational tech side, we got... Well, here in St. Croix, we have C-Tech. Okay. Right. And in St. Thomas, mm -hmm. we have the Ralph Whitley Skills mm -hmm. Center. And um, what we've done through the TANF program is really understand that we can't work in silos, so we formulated um, community partnerships. Right. And with our core community partnership groups, uh, we've been able to expand our services uh, through allowing our clients to participate uh, in com computer literacy courses mm -hmm. through UVI Cell. Yes. Financial literacy is getting ready now to launch. Uh, we've also partnered off with the Department of Labor through their workforce development, um, getting ready now to have them partake in what we call matrix learning. Mm. And matrix learning offers online courses, over 7,000 courses mm. that uh, have certain classes that are nationally certified. So now, you know, our town of clients have that availability. Yeah. So it lends itself not only to being able to gain skills that are marketable here, but marketable globally. Wow, excellent. Right here in the territory, we're offering these fine services. Uh, uh, you know, uh, one thing I really do want to know is there's a lot of initiatives that I see you guys doing. Um, I saw uh, VI Prep, and I actually had to work with that uh, mm -hmm. in this giving a description to the press about what that program does. Can you talk to me a little bit about what uh, VI Prep is oh, up I, to? I love, that's one of my favorite programs. Yeah. Actually, we collaborated with the Department of Education. Uh -huh. And what VI Prep stands for is the Virgin Islands Personal Responsibility Education Program. And what it does is creates a sense of awareness for our youth in terms of how to be responsible for themselves and make proud choices and reduce teen pregnancy, reduce um, sexually transmitted infections, and reduce risk behaviors. Yes. So um, I... Uh, so introducing them to financial literacy. All of that, it plays itself. I saw a picture well. with you and a bunch of kids. I was like, this is the program? This is They look like they're learning something, you know? I love that. And as an educator, that really um, resonates to my spirit because I understand the impact that that particular program has and we trained over 21 educators on the St. Thomas district we're getting ready to do the same here on the island of St. Croix and and collaborating also with St. John to make sure that our educators and counselors are empowered with that knowledge so that we are really impacting not just high school but middle schools as well yes okay so that the program is going to reach a higher age bracket sooner uh, that's excellent the work that we're doing here as we finish up today, I definitely uh, think that we need to squash any misnomers or myths that might be out there circulating about the program. Do you guys know any of which you want to address right now today? Hmm. I think one of them that I would address is someone thinking that once I start on this program, there's no hope for me on the program. Hmm. Um, starting as a worker with the division, I can tell you of cases where I've seen children of my clients that have now come off of the program and are now self-sufficient. They right. may not have necessarily followed the pattern of staying on the program, especially since now you have a time limit because previously you could be on it until your last child turned 18. Right. So a lot of our young people have taken advantage of the program that is offered to them, gained the skills, and now they're self-sufficient with children of their own who hopefully will walk in the same pattern of self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think that for me, um, the cookie cutter approach. Okay. The, the program is not a cookie cutter approach. I am equipped with a team of experts, like the staff that I've worked with on an average has about over 15 years of experience. And we've adopted a evidence-based practice approach called Goal For It, where it's more client-centered. So mm -hmm. every client has his or her individual needs, because I need to stress his. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to kind of be gender biased, because TANF is also available for males right. who are head of household, who are guardians of their yeah, children. 
Okay, so I want to make sure, and even grandparents as well, so there's no age bias either. Yeah, um, Janet will help you get back to standing on business. Correct, to and so we want to make sure that we send a message. Um, with the Go For It model, it's more client-centered, where the client is telling us what they would like to accomplish, both short-term and long-term goals, and we support them in our coaching element of style. Right. So that's something that we just rolled out this October, and we we continue to use innovative practices to meet the demands and the needs of our clients specifically. Um, within the first 90 days, part of our key performance indicators uh, mandated that they have to have a self-sufficiency plan in place. And we pride ourselves with meeting with our clients, setting those goals together, mm -hmm. and coaching them along until you know they reach that finish line. So yeah. I want to make sure that the message goes out there. There is not a cookie cutter approach. That is individualized coaching that takes place. Place. You two women are so passionate about this program, Miss David, 31 years. Mm -hmm. um, what would you tell an individual who is thinking about joining the program? They heard us have this conversation, but they still have their doubts, not because they think that they're not mentally or individually inclined mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. what's going on, but they just don't feel that they have to put themselves out there. But what would you encourage them by telling them to do that they can get out of this? Just come into our office if you have some questions. We're more than happy to sit with you and answer any questions. Realize that the TANF program is a program that's designed to help you to get to self-sufficiency. Everyone may be down at some point in their life, but you don't have to remain down. You come in, you take advantage of the program, you take advantage of the classes that are offered, you can change your life for you, not just yourself, but also for your children. And Dr. Burke, I know that it's that's with the direction of the program, you've taken it from one place to another. Where would you like to see it expanded to? What I like to see it expanded to is to broaden it to uh, include uh, equity, ah. to be uh, more equitable yes. in terms of making sure that the Creole Haitian community is able to receive equitable services, Hispanic uh, community is able to have equitable services and are aware of the services that we have. So I'm going to use this platform, a nuestra comunidad hispana, tenemos el programa TANF para ustedes, eh, la asistencia temporaria para la Familias necesitadas, venga al Departamento de Servicios Humanos si necesitas ayuda. Sí. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining us here. We love it when we get to sit down and talk to our experts, our resident professionals, about what really is happening at DHS. And the TANF Jobs Program is arguably one of our most important programs out of the 84 of them that we service. I want to thank you all for coming in You're here today. Welcome. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. All and right. thank you for joining us on another edition of Your VIDHS. I'm your host, Ryan Nugent. We'll see you next time. All right, thank, thank you. you.